Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Question came up that the experience of the certain effortlessness, a sense of flow where there is no separation between you and the movement. It seems like you're being done as much as doing, where there is a there's a magic happens. What? How do we get there? And how do we how do we get there often? And how do we get there predictably? And that's um, it's one of those things where kind of like riding a bike. Like when you're first learning how to ride a bike, you're you're struggling with it, you know, and you're falling down. You're there's uh, there's anxiety about it. But once you get really, really good at it, then it's like you're, it just happens and you don't, you don't think about it. You're just, uh, you know, saying, oh, I'm, I'm riding my bike now. You, you're just, it just is, is part of the, uh, of a process that you have become a, an integral element in. So how do we get that with our Taiji Tran and, in life and how do we be able to go to that state of effortlessness uh, often where there's a, a sense of, oh, this is so, uh, so easy. There's, I'm, I don't have to do anything. It's just like things, um, if I reach out and, you know, to push someone, they magically fall away and like, huh, how, 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 does, how does that happen? So I'd like to throw in my two cents on this because this is an important question and it cuts right to the core of a lot of the stuff we're talking about. So what is it that that's, that's going there? And the, the important thing that I see is that in those moments, there is no uh, distance between me, the doer, and that which is done. There is there there is no there is no different distance. And where does that distance come from? And the answer that comes up for me is it comes from your mind. That is your your object based consciousness. Your desire to understand the world, to tell a story. To identify things, to label things, to to be able to talk to other people about what just happened, that all requires object-based consciousness. That is, you're turning stuff into objects, labeling them so that we can then communicate about. And that is what we we call that language. And without those mind objects, then we can't communicate. There is. We can't even remember, we can't organize our thoughts because it's all just now. And it's a distinct quality of being a human is that we can do that. We can label stuff and talk to each other about stuff and, and have some sense that the, if I say car, that you're thinking you have an idea of a car, even though it might not be the car that I'm thinking of, but you got a general, category of things automobiles that that you have known and loved and uh, or maybe not loved but you've got that so there's car means something so it's an object that we share a mind object that we share a category of things even if we don't necessarily have the exact same information that's being uh that's being shared it's a there is a general quality there and so much of what our language does is it it creates these generalities that enable us to communicate to each other and to be able to also to organize information and make sense of the chaos that is life. So we get addicted to that though. We get addicted to that, that object-based consciousness, the, you know, what I call the, uh, the trance of objectification. I call that in, uh, in finding you, it's like, we, when we get into that, then it seems like there's nothing but objects. There's nothing but ideas. There's nothing but thoughts. 
So thoughts seem to be omnipresent. There's a stream of consciousness that we are kind of swimming in. Thought leads to another thought, leads to another thought. And we don't take the time to recognize that there are moments where between thought A and thought B, that there is a gap there. There's, it may be infinitesimally small, but there is a gap. And we can, by bringing our awareness to that gap, we can, we can stretch it out so that, oh, you're actually able to be in that gap. You're actually able to occupy a non-zero period of time in the gap between thoughts. If something is happening all day, you're having gaps between your thoughts all day, but if your attention is just on the objects, you don't notice the, the space between the objects. Just like in music, if, we, if you only notice the notes and you don't notice the, the space between the notes, you don't notice the, the duration of the notes and the fact that that note's gone now and hey, this new note's come on here and in between there is a no note. And so that you could, if you don't recognize that you miss half of the fun of music. Same thing with thinking. If you don't recognize that there is this space between these thoughts, the thoughts all kind of jam together and it can seem like they are running you. They can seem like you are, you are being controlled by your thoughts. And that's a very common thing. People get caught up in thought loops and they just can't, don't know how to get off the train. So the, um, the capacity to to be able to shift out of that is an important part of this, of how we can get into that state of flow, that state where, oh, we're in the zone, things are just clicking. And sometimes in that state, then we say, oh, I need a thought now. And boom, a thought magically appears. And then you can dismiss that and go back to, to flowing again. So getting into that, that quality, that, that, that sense of, of being unified with the experience so that you actually, experience is actually not even the wrong word there because to experience something, you have to objectify it. So we're talking about where you and the event are one, then there is, we have to be able to shift out of that thinking part and move into what I call the super consciousness. That is where the body, mind, spirit are integrated at a very high level. And uh, so we're gonna get into how to actually do this, but the, uh, I want to emphasize this because this is, I didn't invent this. I invented some of the language for it just because it's, I, I, I found that the, the traditional language was a little cumbersome for communicating. It took me decades to sort through a lot of the things that uh, I encountered very early on. And I, uh, you know, I want to kind of speed up the process for, uh, for other people by translating into language that maybe can allow for some direct steps to be taken. So for, to that end, I want to, uh, I want to read a couple of, uh, a couple of, sentences uh, from the uh, uh, probably the first of the Taiji classics. It's called the Taiji Tran Jing, and which is it translates to classic or book or um, it's like the I Jing is, you know, it's like the book of changes. Anyway, it's like a, uh, it's an important book. Um, it may date back to uh, 12th century it's generally attributed to Zhang Sheng Fong, who is the legendary creator of Taiji Tran, and uh, uh, nobody can confirm or deny that. But it's it's one of those things that uh, it's it's tradition. So, needless to say, it goes back a long ways. It's considered to be the first book, and it starts off with language that is really appropriate for what we're talking about here. So it starts off by saying, whenever one moves, the entire body must be light and lively. 
and must above all be connected throughout. So that goes on to say the chi should be uh, excited. The spirit should be gathered within. Now I'm going to skip ahead to um, there must always be completely one chi. Okay, so we got four basic concepts there that I'd like to like to talk about because this directly uh, pertains to these things and helps us to understand that that there's a rich tradition for 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 this conversation anyway, and every line of this of this we can spend hours just breaking down each line because it's it's really juicy stuff and I highly recommend it. The translation that I uh, the I prefer is this one here for the Taiji Chuan Classics by uh, Barbara Davis, um, but there's lots of other interpretations. Yet I, I find it hers explanation be the clearest. Um, uh, but so let's just start with that first line there because this is really important here. So whenever one moves, the entire body must be light and lively and must above all be connected throughout. So first off, we start off with a, a qualifier there, whenever one moves. So we're talking about, oh, we're not, we're not in stillness. Now we are moving, we are moving and the body must be light and lively and must have, above all be connected throughout. So immediately we have this, the implied with that is that you're not connected throughout, but you got to get there because that's, that's an important part. So what does that mean to be connected throughout? It's like, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm connected with that. My, my foot bone is connected to my ankle bone. My ankle bone is connected to my shin bone. So you, the, everything is connected. So what is not connected? Your mind. That is, your mind has created divisions just by my labeling those things, those different parts of the body. They're no longer parts of my body. They're just, they're, they're individual things. They become objects, mind objects. So, and whenever we move, Everything's light and lively and above all must be connected throughout. So we got this, this sense that, oh, the, the mind has to shift out of its normal state of splitting, of analysis, of creating divisions and move into a state of wholeness. So, We'll get to how we get there, but that's uh, the uh, that state of wholeness is key to this. That is, that everything is moving together as one. And if you're thinking, okay, well, I'm going to move my left arm with my right arm and my foot with my, you're you're splitting up. You've 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 moved, you've gone beyond the uh, the parameters of that wholeness, and you're back into the analysis. You're thinking about what's the right thing to do here. What what's the, what's the correct thing to do? which is absolutely vital for study, for practice, you gotta be able to do that. You gotta know how to move and where to move and, and what's the right way to do this and what's the most efficient way, and that's great. But whenever we want to get into this state of flow, we need to get light and lively and we gotta connect everything up. And that means to step away from that sense of division that the mind creates. So the chi must be excited. So there's a there's a, a broad idea that the chi is going to be sedated in Tai Chi. We're good. Oh, we're doing this to calm down. We're not doing this to to rev up. We're doing it to to calm down and get really get really mellow. And what this is saying, no, no, the chi must be excited. And another place it says excited and excitable. It's like, you know, we gotta get, we gotta, you gotta rev that up. So you're not, you're not just settling down into, you know, the the thing that most people associate with Tai Chi is relax. And this is saying, no, no, we're not relaxing. We're excited. We're excited. We're not going to, we're not going to sleep here. We're we're awake, we're wide awake. And the spirit should be gathered within. So, you know, if spirit is everywhere and in all things, that's great. 
but if whenever you move, whenever you're doing your form, whenever you're doing Tai Chi, whatever, the spirit must be gathered within. That means you're condensing the infinite and bringing it into the finite. You're packing it into you. So you are moving from your connection to your oneness with everything and you're, woof, you're condensing down to me. And that's where, that's where it begins. We gotta, we gotta unify that whole system. It's not splattered everywhere, it's here, it's now. And then um, going on there, so, and there must be always completely one chi. So what does that mean? It's like, wasn't there always one chi? Well, actually, when we're talking about this, this individuated unit that I am, I got to get the whole system energetically coherent. The chi must be in a state of wholeness. So I've got this chi, which is excited, but it's also in a state of wholeness. I've got the, my whole body is connected throughout. It's something, I have to put that there. It doesn't just happen. So we're looking at this, you know, we get, we're trying to get to this place where it seems like way, 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 we're just doing nothing. It just, it's just happening. But how do we get there? We get there by doing something. We get there by actually taking the steps necessary to allow this alchemy to occur. And that happens whenever we're able to, to get our chi unified, we connect the whole system and we shift from getting our parts aligned to there are no parts. We're in a state of wholeness now. Now we can move. And that's, that's where, that's where that, that happens. So that's, that's my interpretation of how to, uh, uh, what is happening there? How we get there is, is be the next thing, but let me just see if there's any questions from, uh, for our comments from people uh, before we go forward from there. Jonathan. Well, again, coming off of Western Gate reading last night, uh, you do emphasize collagen and uh, connective tissue as the unifying force because the body has parts that are, you can say, you got muscles and you got bones and this, that's the connective tissue that's already there unifying. So right. your work is there to somehow connect us with that or make that become alive in some way, yes? Right, right, absolutely. And so, you know, the, you know, the, the, the thing that, that I've been emphasizing for years is to, to consciously point and reach. You bring your, you, you focus your attention on your index fingers and you extend them in such a way that it lights up your connective tissue system and creates this state of, of wholeness throughout the whole body. Everybody, they, it, it all comes online. Yeah, Richard. Well, um, I'm sure that all of us and most of our um, careers in Tai Chi have been told over and over and over again how important whole body movement is. And now we're talking about what does that actually mean? Um, yes. And the other thing that occurs to me is that um, excitement of the chi probably can't be achieved without complete relaxation. So we have, so we have an irony there as well. Um, I don't know if that's true. Okay. In fact, in fact, I, I think that that, that would not be a uh, re complete relaxation would not be an, a, a condition for <clears throat> chi excitement. I mean, you just, you know, if you pound your chest and you can get excited chi. So it's okay. that it's, I don't think it's, it's necessarily a, a relationship there uh, with relaxation. Well, I, I think I, I think that it's hard for me to separate coherence from relaxation. And that's one of the things that I, that I think I need to work on because it's not relaxation, it's coherence, but I kind of put the two together. Uh, you know, how to get coherent has to do with being able to relax, first of all. Um, but that's, you know, but that's maybe oversimplified. Um, so. Certainly the way I use it, it would there'll be an oversimplification. Um, and, and I think it make it create an unnecessary, unnecessary barrier there. 
So okay. I think I consider them both important to be able, you know, also to identify what is it you are relaxing. Right. What are you relaxing? You know, when you say, you know, complete relaxation, what are you relaxing? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm trying to take the tension all out of my body. Right. Muscular tension. Right. So, you know, as something you said earlier was like, if, but you have to replace it with something that works right in order in order to be able to do that because if 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 i completely dissolve all my muscular tension and i don't replace it with something else i'm just a puddle on the floor right right so i need to replace it with something else let's get back to the point that jonathan was making we get our connective tissue system aligned we get it activated we get the chi excited and it's it's exciting the connective tissue system. We can then relax our muscular tension and and still feel confident right. that we're not going to collapse. Right. Yeah, we're 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 getting there. And the, this explanation is getting there for me. So uh, but there, like I said, there seem to be there are a lot of ironies to resolve, you know. So. Well, uh, that, that's an important one because I think a lot of people feel that way. A lot of people are like, oh, yeah, they've heard over and over again, you got to relax, totally relax. And so the words become kind of meaningless after a while. Right. Nobody is totally relaxed. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, like, kind of, it's kind of like, and then in combination with what Sharon was saying, it's sort of like, I need to learn to totally relax and let my chi move my body. So... I, 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 the, the words as stated, I don't make any sense to me at all. So, so you, you're getting it totally relaxed and let the chi move. It, it, I, I don't see that that is even a possibility. Right. So, so yeah. we, we need to change the words a little bit so that we can make something that works. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm, so I, we can actually make yeah. something happen with that. I, I'm agreeing with what you're saying, but I'm just, I'm trying to point out how not just me, but probably it's a common misconception. Uh, I agree that we agree. want the, we want the chi to take over, so we want to get out of it. You know, right. and uh, right, Lynn, you had something. You're on mute. Hey, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, now, actually, um, I was wondering if um you know a state of readiness or potential might be a better description of what you're you know what you're going for so that yeah they get a sense of that anticipation or being ready to end to end you know for whatever you know yeah i, I think that, that that's uh uh a, a useful way of thinking about it um one has to take to take into account that how do most people get ready for something, you know, and they 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 tense up. Right. So right. that's that's goes back to what Richard's saying. It's like we don't want that. We don't want to tense up in order to to do that. So how do we do that? So the what Zhong Zheng Fong is saying here is like, no, no, you rev up the chi, and mm -hmm. you get that revved up so that. You connect the dots, you rev up the chi, and then something something cool might happen. So the uh, but you're right. The uh, it is that there is a state of readiness there, so, but not anticipation. It's it's uh, so we make a distinction here now between at least I do the the chi getting excited and the spirit that is gathered within is not. It's it's the calm eye of the hurricane. So the that we're gathering the, the spirit within, and that is that is a placid lake, you know, and all around it there is this turmoil, you know, this the chi is ah, it's ready to go. And then we hmm, we're calm and centered there. So yeah. I in terms that you have used before, the poles in opposition, it's it's sort of like becoming the battery with nothing connected. So all the potential is there and the poles exist, but there's no circuit yet. 
And uh, what are we talking about at that point? At that, so, what, what is that okay. analogous to? No, that's the ready. No, that's the ready state. That's that's the. the I don't think so. a battery is a battery is that is is nothing's happening in the battery until until the uh, until we get a uh, till we get something connected up to the poles because that's when the that's when that's when the uh, that's when the, the 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 battery gets excited. But there is all that potential nonetheless enclosed in the battery, and all it takes is a, is a connection or a stimulus in the analogy to get things going. Right. So that, you know, maybe it doesn't quite work, but it's it's you know it's a state. The battery is in a state of readiness. All the energy is there, waiting to be released. And uh, and and that's the same sense of anticipation, not anticipation, but but uh, no sense. Right. No, it's kind of you know when you're when you're in preparation or you're in Wuji, you're in the place where there is the potential, there's nothing going on, but there's potential for everything. And that's kind of, that's why I, it's sort of, I just throw that out there as a possibility. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Uh, okay. Moving forward. So uh, we'll, uh, the, uh, so we have these 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 four ideas here that whenever we're going to move that the um, everything has to be connected throughout the chi must be excited the spirit is gathered within and there is only one chi so this idea of of connecting the dots of creating a um, a wholeness, a state of wholeness, it allows us to shift out of our normal object-based consciousness and move into a state which allows for this movement, allows for the the all these parts to come together. Because the uh, uh, prior to that state of wholeness, where the mind is, is going around and it is programmed to, to look for trouble. It's programmed to, to sort through all potential problems. There's, is, it's, a, it's a hive of activity that is, that is occurring inside. And whenever we move, we're engaging outside. We are, we are extending our awareness into the environment so that we can interact with life. And so to do that, we have to kind of flip the mind around so that it is able to, to extend that energy outward, to be able to, to, um, to interact with, with, with something else. So we get to where, whenever, if we want to get to that state of, of flow of where it seems like nothing's happening. We have to set up the the necessary steps in order to make that happen. We have to do the things that the the requirements in order to be able to go to that place. And so we um, we want to create that state of wholeness, and from that state of wholeness, then amplify the chi, like beating a drum. There's a that's one of those images that comes up in the classics. It's like you're you're vibrating the chi in order to make it happen, because you want to. You're moving from a state of rest. So, like in that battery analogy, it's at a state of rest. You know, there's a lot of something going on inside of the potentials there, but it the battery itself it can it can sit in my 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 drawer for a couple of years and and it's not doing anything. It's not until it gets plugged in that it actually gets to fulfill its function as a battery. So we shift away from that, that internal dialogue that, that occurs inside in our object-based consciousness and, and we engage the world, we get our bodies moving and connect it up in such a way that there, we're reducing the distance between mind and body 
there's never a place where it's they're they're perfect. And I, maybe I say it's it's a rare occasion when they're perfectly aligned, uh, but we can get so close that we can we can feel it. We can it feels like oh yeah, this is what that feels like to be in that perfect state of 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 oneness with everything, and you're just everything is just flowing along, and and your intention that spirit that gathers within is able to just to put something out there, put an intention out there, and it doesn't have to go through a thinking process in order to make it happen. It just happens. And that's when we, it feels like, oh, that's that, I want more of that. And the way we get there is by reducing the distance between the mind and the body so that they become closer and closer to a resonance. And so that's where we get into our Kung Fu, because it's not something that gets done overnight. It's something that happens over, over a period of time, because we have to rewire our nervous system in order to make that happen. So let's, uh, let's do a couple of things here to kind of bring this into being, let's uh, to make this, make this happen. The first thing I want to do is, um, is an exercise that is part of the um, reclaiming, lost. reclaiming lost territory exercise, the warm up exercises that that I teach, and and it's um, I've done it pretty much as a as a stretching kind of thing, like we're kind of letting go of, of internal tension to be able to create more. Uh, more space in the shoulder and the neck and, and, and the arm and the chest and and but I want to include something here because there's we want to include the idea of the fingers, particularly the fingernails, and the fact that there are in each hand there's like six meridians that are uh, are activated there. And whenever we whenever we grasp with those fingernails, as we're doing in the in the dragon, we're grasping the fingernails. Then we're activating those meridians. So what we want to do is we're going to once you stand up, we'll just it's a it's a short a short thing, but it's a uh, I got to thinking of it as part of the uh, the, the grass dragon exercise, and so just feel your fingernails through your fingers and your hands are, are kind of cupped. They're rounded. So you can, one way of, of, of establishing it, just put your hand on your head and that gives you the shape, that rounded shape there. It's like, there's a, uh, there's a hollow there in your, your, in your, at the palm of your hand and the fingers are spread. And as if you're, you've got claws on the end there, we got our dragon claws and we're, we're grasping with our claws and immediately you'll feel something, right? And this is activating your wood chi, it's, it's liver chi, it's good for your connective tissue. So it's you're immediately connecting up the whole system connective tissue wise. But I want you to bring your arms out, actually bring your right arm out and want to feel with your your fingers, right? Feel those, those, those nails there. And then open your neck. Reach with your head the opposite direction and feel the meridians coming up the arms, some of them coming up into your head, some of you going down into your chest. But what we're doing here is we are creating a space and a uh, energetic connection. You can move your head around and really just feel into that. So you wanna reach out with your arm, reach out with those fingers, grabbing with the fingernails and you're reaching with the head and you're opening up the meridians here. You know, your lung meridian comes up and it goes into your right here and then your heart comes into your armpit and then the, the uh, triple warmer comes up your arm and goes up your neck and into uh, first to your ear and then around your ear and up into your eye. So yeah, that triple warmer is really important for your vision and your hearing. 
the heart and the lung there. It's got a self-explanatory pericardium is for the, for the heart area as well. It gets rid of the excess heat there. And good. So now they go the other side, you're reaching with the fingers and opening. And you want to feel that energetic connection between your fingernails and allow that to go. And you can check out the, uh, the, where the different meridians go. It's a worthwhile exercise. I'm not going to talk about them right now, but you want to feel that. Just, just know that by doing this, you are activating your meridians. Now just kind of reach out with both arms and just feel that, feel that energetic connection. Feel the power that is in your arms now. As you do that, as you're feeling those, those fingernails, your arms are relaxed, your shoulders are relaxed, but there's, there is, you're being animated by your chi. And hands come down. And just pause and just feel into your, feel into your arms and just notice the, that, that, little, that little bit of stretch there that we did, how that activated the chi in your hands and your arms. And you can feel it circulating throughout your body. Okay, so we have a little bit of time. What I'd like to do is to Take that energy and we're going to go and we're going to we're going to visit our grass dragon again. Uh, if you are just coming to this video, I, I recommend you check the last couple. Uh, we've been playing with this for a few weeks now, so I'm not going to do the whole the whole spiel on this. But we're going to focus on those elements that we just talked about, that is. You want to feel your, whenever you move, you want to feel the whole system connected throughout. The chi is energized, it's, it's excited. The spirit is gathered within. You're not splattered all over the place. You're right here, right now. You're occupying your body, your space, your energy field. And there's just one chi. That is, there's a coherent chi. Everything is pulsing together. It's not a whole bunch of little uh, competing waveforms. It's just all one thing. So you want to feel that. And feel your tail, your dragon tail, where your coccyx is. And just very gently, you're going to move your tail. You're going to wag your tail. You're going to wag it to the left. You're going to wag it to the right. Feel that, that, that sense. You're moving from that tail. So whatever else we're doing in these exercises, we are Half of the 50% is from the tail. 50% of our focus is on the tail. So there's lots of other stuff that will occur here, but we want to feel that. Just feel that tail there. And it's opening up your conception vessel, your governing vessel, you're bringing them into, uh, it's like it, it uh, amplifies your microcosmic orbit. Yeah, so now reach with your wrists. Reach with your fingers, open your back, open between your scapula. And you wanna feel those fingers, you're grasping, you're reaching out with your arms, but you're grasping. And for this part, we just wanna drop your elbows a little bit so you're, you're your arms are in a very narrow, they're coming right out straight from your shoulder, kind of feeling there. You're reaching, your, I saw that that screen kind of froze up on me, but it, it so you're, you're reaching with your, your head to the, to the right as you reach, uh, to the left as your hand reaches out to the right. And then 
you wag your tail down, spiral down, your hip circles down, and you're back to the center. Now you wag your tail to the left, you reach, your head reaches over to the, to the right as your left hand comes out. Your left hip circles up here, you're reaching out with that, that left arm. So here, notice that we are doing something, we're doing something. We're activating, we're exciting the whole system. And so this part is not that effortless part. This is the part where we, we're, we're building up, we're creating the, the conditions for us to be able to move into that, that effortlessness part. So what we're doing, we're getting the chi excited, the spirit is gathered within, we're shifting into a super conscious state. The chi is circulating throughout the whole system. So you get this one chi. Good, now tail wags back to center. So you wanna feel the whole system, you wanna feel your fingers connected up with your toes your head with your feet. You feel your spine, feel your hips, everything. And, but don't think about them, just feel them. And that circle, wag your tail to the right, you're reaching out, your right hip circles up and around and down. Left circles. To feel the energies as it gets excited, right? Head goes to the left, left, head goes to the right. Want to feel the you're reaching out with your arms there and feeling those fingernails. So that's opening the meridians in your arms. And it's allowing you to reclaim some of the vitality that has been lost. Now we're gonna, left hand is gonna go forward. Now we're gonna sit down, head goes to the right, left hand reaches under as we sink down and then come back to center. And then right hand goes out and back to center. Left hand, circle, right hand, and center. Left hand, circle, reaches out, right hand. And hands get down. Sink into your heels and feel into the yin. Feel the energy circulating. Now rotate your palms forward, open your chest, open your shoulders, open your throat and invite the energy to come in. Allow it to do its work, to fix whatever needs fixing.
I'm going to take your hands back. Step in. Take a deep breath. Disappear the chi, empty it out. Please take a seat. So one thing I want to um, comment on thought it occurred to me there was um, um, that if we want to get into that state where the chi is carrying us along, we need enough chi for that to happen. At least if we want to do it predictably. It's something that can happen possibly uh, uh, serendipitously. But if you want it to something that is a, something you can encourage to happen, you need so much energy that it feels like you're being carried along by a wave. And it, that doesn't happen by real, you know, we were talking about total relaxation. It doesn't happen from that because that's, that implies entropy that implies just sort of a collapse into a into a um, an equilibrium state where you're moving closer to death this is moving in the opposite direction this is saying more turn up the volume and whenever that happens then you are able to to access that uh, that really cool uh, uh, wave you know that uh, that carries us along uh, anybody, any, any thoughts, any questions? Lynn. So I'm trying to figure out how this experience I had fits with what you're saying. Um, we were hiking on Saturday uh, and we're in this wonderful clean mountain stream and, you know, just enjoying and walking around in it and da da da. And I was just standing there feeling the current against my legs, you know, and then I thought, oh, I'll get coherent. So I got coherent and then I didn't feel any current. Right. Like the water was still moving, but it wasn't pushing against me. It, it didn't feel like, I mean, I think I was, I can't, I can't really quite understand what I was doing, um, but that seemed, I'm trying to think like that seemed effortless in the kind of way like if I had been pushing, it would have been effortless, right? Um, in the way that Jonathan was talking about earlier. So I'm just thinking about how that state, which was simply getting coherent and not, I mean, that is ramping up the chi, I know, but not working to ramp up the chi fits with what you're talking about, like um, having enough chi and thus being able to be carried along by it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I, I think it's 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 in in your description, you're not you're not doing a lot. You're in a state of stillness. Right. So, in other words, the event is coming to you. Right. Okay. So it's okay. the opposite end of the spectrum from what uh, Zhong Zhong Fong is talking about there, which he says when moving. So right. it's like oh we're so it's like oh it's like it's like you're getting a a massage by a babbling brook. Right. 
<laughs> yeah. How, yeah. how great is that, right? <laughs> you can kind of you can get carried off with that because, like, hey, yeah, this is great. But right. it's it's a kind of the opposite of what we're talking about, which is how do I get it so that I'm able to move and and to move effortlessly and to to dunk the basketball or uh, you know hit that uh, you know 400 yard tee shot or whatever it is you, you're riding your bike and you're suddenly like oh you know there's what, what where'd the last 45 minutes go you know that kind of thing it's like hey yeah i'm just it's all that's a, that's a different kind of thing okay cool thanks richard i just want to ask lynn it sounds like you were standing in the stream and your physical body was resisting the, the movement, the push of the stream. And at a point, your physical body stopped doing that, and it was your chi balancing those forces. I, I think that's a fair way to describe it. I mean, I wasn't actively resisting. But, right, you know, right, but you felt, you felt the resistance. Right, my skin was aware of the resistance, and then, right. and then it, it wasn't any longer. So yeah, I think my chi <clears throat> balanced it so i didn't need to feel that right wow. yeah cool how, how cool yeah. it was very cool <laughs> yeah. it sounds it sounds to me like you met the stream and once you met the stream you were in the stream of one so there is no resistance right that's kind and of what it sounds I, like yeah. yeah and then i just said to nick hey get coherent and see what happens <laughs> too right i mean it was like it was you know it was an easy stream to meet, perhaps, but it was a lovely stream to meet. It was yeah. a lovely stream. It sounds like a very benign stream. <laughs> <laughs> Scott. Uh, I have to say that I don't ever watch these again. Do uh, what? Just, I don't ever watch these again because, you know, I usually get what I get from them and then go on to the next one, and, you know, practice what I practice. But... This one, I think I'm going to have to watch quite a few times. I think there was really a lot to unpack here, and I don't think we scratched the surface. Uh, happy, happy to elaborate if, if people want, but uh, that uh, we, we, we did cover a lot of, hopefully I didn't talk too much, but the, oh, uh, no. it seemed like it was uh, appropriate under the circumstances. No, I think this was probably the best class ever, personally, and there's so much. <laughs> Don't wow. I, yeah, no, I really do. And I think uh, that's why I'm going to need to watch it more than once because there's just there's just too much to get in one viewing. Great. So thank, thank you so much. That was great. Wonderful. Oh, good. That, that, that worms the cockles of me art. <laughs> thank you. And uh, yes. yeah. You, what are you going to say? I was just going to say that you generated so much chi that our screen froze up for a good, you know, minute or so. <laughs> Valerina, did you have something? Yeah, but I don't know how to actually say it so that it makes sense um, because I'm. It's a feeling. Um, ever not ever since, but since we started. And been pointing for a very long time, right? But doing the fingernails has made a tremendous amount of difference because, and it also goes along with when you said um, using as little effort as possible to maintain the posture. Now that can, to some people, mean that you're very relaxed, but to me, it's not because you can be in that excited state with the chi and it takes very little effort to move, right? And if I at least set my intention to, I feel the heaviness of my arms, right? And that, that also goes down into the heaviness of my feet. And that helps me let go of the shoulders and things blossom. Um, like, I don't know, like I said, if I'm expressing this very well and it's making sense, but um, it's 
if I'm not feeling that, it's like, then I pay attention to my shoulder. And I can pay attention to my shoulder and let my shoulder go by feeling the heaviness of my hand that may be way up in the air, you know, and it doesn't feel like dropping. It, I, I, I don't know how to describe it, <laughs> but I found something. Yay. <laughs> <like it. laughs> Bravo. Uh, you know, so much of this is right on the on the edge of words, you know, and words kind of um, sometimes do violence <laughs> to, to the event. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I try to make my words as gentle as possible. But even even then, it's like I, I recognize that I'm, 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 you know, mussing them up, mussing up the event a little bit by talking about it, but it's necessary. So we, we go ahead, you know, because we're playing with, we're playing at the very edge of experience. You know, we're playing right where, where experience kind of moves into something else. And that's, that's fun. So it's a good idea to have at least some, some trail of breadcrumbs to, to describe some of this woo woo stuff that we're, we're after here. Well, there's definitely a sense of um, bubbling inside. And that's mixed, you know, that bubbling like effervescent and there's joy in there. Um, but Yay. not not this. And it's not uh, it's not uh, wimped out either. That's that's the stuff there. That's that's what we're talking about. And this is a process. It's just like there's no finish line on this zero there's just it just keep keep on going it's like what else is possible you know and you get to you know we've all gotten to places that we never imagined and we say yeah but if that was cool what else is out there and so we get to, we get to explore even more so the 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 game has just begun one more richard you had uh, you had your hand up Oh, I, um, I don't know if it's a good ending of this. I was just going to say something that a thought that occurred to me early in the class tonight. And I just want to share this to see what people think about it. Um, moving into the gap between thoughts is sitting on the bank of the stream of consciousness. Hmm. Nice. I like that. It's very poetic. It's very nice. I, I just... I, I, I give that to you if you can ever use it. Uh, thank you. I, 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 I might just. That's, I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, that, that's very poetic. I like that. This is a great, great class, like everyone's saying, and uh, we're going to have to review the last few classes to catch up properly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A uh, lot, lot of fun stuff happened. The, uh, uh, we just did a little bit of the dragon today, but you know, the last week was... Uh, was uh, big <laughs> you know but the the way that you're bringing in the classics uh is a way that actually enriches my understanding and interpretation of what i've heard so many times uh i want to thank thank you for that that's really oh, been great i appreciate that thank you you know like i say i could i could <laughs> I could talk for hours just on one paragraph of some of this stuff. It's a, it is so, so rich, you know, and inscrutable, you know, to me for decades, it took, it took a long time for me to sort through this and translate it into language that, that, you know, made more sense to me, at least in terms of my ability to activate, to make it actionable. So it, uh, it's one thing to describe something, another thing to be able to tell someone how to get there. So that's the fun part. Anyway, thank you all so much. It's been great. And uh, see you next week. Bye-bye. Great to see everyone. Thanks, Maria. Thanks, Maria. Thanks, Maria. Yeah. Love you all.